we will continue solving problems about our current topic that is actual deformation and strain. So today, we are on example number 9. A system consists of two rigid end plates. So this is considered rigid end plates tied together by three horizontal bars. So we have one, two, and three horizontal bars as shown in the figure. Through a fabrication error, the central bar is 0.0005L too short. So we have delta which is equal to this value. All bars are identical cross section and of still having E is equal to 210 gigapascal. Find the stress in its bar after bar 2 has been physically attached to the end plate. Any external force is removed. So the problem is telling us that we have to connect this rigid end plate to bar 2 so that it will be attached to bar 2. Since that is a rigid end plate, it will not deform in bending. It will remain to be a straight line even after we attach it into the end of bar 2. So if we apply a force that will attach this end plate to bar 2, then these two outer bars will be under compression and they will deform in compression. So here is the original position of the rigid end plate before we will apply the force that will attach it into bar 2. So it is 0.0005L away from bar 2. After we attach this end rigid plate to bar 2, we will release the force that we apply. Since the problem tells us that any external force is removed. So we have to remove the force that we apply to attach this end rigid plate to bar 2. After we remove the force, what will happen is this end plate tend to return back to its original position. But since bar 2 has the capability to resist forces, then therefore it will not let this rigid bar return back to its original position. The forces that will tend to return the rigid end plate to its original position will be the forces acting on this bar that is bar 1 and another bar 1. It will tend to push this end plate to go back to its original position. But since these two bars, bar 1, are also deformable bodies, then therefore, they will be remain to be under compressive action deformation. Let the deformation of these outer bars equal to delta 1, that is measured from the original location of the end plate up to the final location of the end plate, and the deformation of the central bar to be delta 2, measured from the original location of the end of bar 2, up to the final position of this end plate. What we did is, we follow step number 1, we draw the deflected shape of the assembly. So after we construct the deflected shape of the assembly, based upon the deformation, we can write equations that will correlate to the equation of axial deformation. So from this figure, it is clear to us now that delta 1 plus this delta 2 will be equal to the original distance from the end of bar 2 up to the original location of end plate that is 0 0.005 of L. The deformation of outer bars will be equal to delta 1. So this bar is an outer bar together with this bar. So the deformation is just equal to delta 1. We can have now this equation and that is our equation number 1. We will now proceed on step 2 in solving the problem. So we will find the forces acting on the horizontal bars. We will apply equations of static equilibrium. But before we can apply equations of static equilibrium, we have to analyze first the distribution of forces depending on the correct direction of forces acting on each of the bar, these three bars on this assembly. So if we apply the force that will tend to connect this end plate to the end of bar 2, these two outer bars will be under compression. After we connect this end plate to the end of bar 2, we will release the force because the problem tells us that any external force is removed. So what will happen on bar 2 is it will tend to hold the plate but these two bars bar 1 will tend to push it back to its original position. But the force acting on the central bar will tend to counteract the forces acting on the outer bars. So the force that will act on bar 2 will be under tension that is acting away bar 2. So here is now the final distribution of forces into our assembly. So for bar 1 that is under compression, let that equal to P1. 
is also P1. So this is also compression. And for bar 2 that is under tension, that is P2. So if we will now apply summation forces along x is equal to 0, we can have this equation. So P1 are rightward forces, those are under compression. And P2 is a leftward force that is under tension. So we can have this equation. Then we will now proceed to step number 3. We just solve for the unknown from our equation. So from equation 1, we have delta 1 plus delta 2 is equal to 0 0.005 of L. And from equation 2, we have twice of P1 is equal to P2. Since areas are identical to each other, then we can say that stresses are also equal to this value. Twice of stress on bar 1 is equal to stress in bar 2. Since if we divide the value of P into area that is equal to stress, we will now replace the value of delta 1 and delta 2 to its equivalent that is equal to PL over AE for bar 1 plus PL over AE of bar 2 that is equal to 0 0.005 of L. So we will replace the value of L into our equation and for bar 2 that is 0 0.0005 too short so the total length will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.0005 that is equal to 0 0.9995 of L then we equate it to 0 0.0005 of L so from this equation we can replace the value of P all over A with the stress so this is stress sub 1 and this is stress sub 2 after simplifying this equation it will be equal to stress 1 plus 0 0.995 stress 2 is equal now to 0 0.005 of E so, we can replace the value of stress 2 to its equivalent that is twice of stress 1. So, we can replace the value of this stress 2 to its equivalent that is twice of stress 1. Thereby, we can solve for the value of stress at bar 1. So, acting on these bars, we just replace the value of E equal to 210 gigapascal. We multiply it by 1000 to convert it into Newton per millimeter square or megapascal. So 0 0.005 that is linear measurement that is meters and 2.99 is also in meters so it will cancel out what will remain will be 35.12 megapascal that is stress on bar 1 and for stress 2 we can solve for that value by using equation 2 so that is twice of stress 1 equal to 70.23 megapascal so since the force acting on the outer bars are compressive force then stress is a compressive stress and for bar 2, since that is a tensile force, then the stress is a tensile stress. I hope that you have learned a lot from this example. To those who want a copy of this file, like and subscribe, comment down your email below, and I will send it to you. Thank you.